Welcome back to Shadows Over Loathing. I had put off going to do a few of these things because I was worried they would take longer than what I had remaining episode-wise. But we're go we'll go straight to the Gatorman Village. You find an old medicine show wagon overturned in the swamp. Most of its contents have long since hazardously dissolved into the local ecosystem. But there's probably some stuff left. See what remains. A few damp t uh, toiletries and even damper medicaments? Bit like medicines? I don't <laughs> I honestly don't know if that's a word or not. The old timey word, perhaps? A gauze pad, the best aid is often the first one. I, I probably have had that before. A styptic pencil. Styptic. Hmm. These are for when you cut yourself shaving, but it's not like you're going to avoid the warranty if you use it on something other than leg or face or armpit blood. <laughs> armpit is the most uncomfortable. I'm just picturing like, ugh. Uh, Bert Worth's finest tooth wax. We've had that. The briquette. And again, the pencil. Okay, a healthy haul healthy both in terms of it being medicines and it being like a healthy size a substantial amount oh i better move my coffee first i'll drink my coffee but i need better access to my keyboard <laughs> when people watch these videos they're gonna think that i'm some coffee fiend who's just slamming it non-stop but usually just the way i schedule my days i just do this early in the day <laughs> another one of these gatorman campsites maybe the ones who kidnapped charles came this way this campsite is similar to the previous one. A lot of Gatorman tracks. I, I keep switching between Gatorman and Gatorman as if he's a superhero versus someone who, who like, uh, like Zellman, you know, like where it's a, it's a part of your last name. Uh, and a lot of discarded trash. These Gatormen, and then here it's a plural thing, so it's yet another way of saying it, sure are slobs. And also you find a 15 16th combination wrench labeled CW. Looks like you're on the right track, at least. Charles's other wrench. He dropped this combination wrench as a clue to help you find him. If I look at my inventory, it stores them separately. Charles's wrench, Charles's other wrench. Which kind of makes me think of like when you find Wirt's leg and Wirt's other leg in Diablo. Which is like just an amazing gag, not worth explaining to someone who hasn't played the games, there's like too much to it. You've already learned everything you're gonna learn from this, I didn't learn anything from it ever. Oh, it's including the same same thing there. What is spl splashing all- is that me walking? There's fish, there's fish running around. Oh, okay, well um, I don't know where I just decided I was gonna fish from. Oh, off in the distance where the fish are splashing, that makes just uh, uh, too much sense. Too much, yeah, an overwhelming excess of, of sense. Slimy noodle fish. That's um, I I would ex I wouldn't expect a noodle fish to be anything other than slimy. I guess you could have it al dente or like raw, dried. I I imagine he'll have something to say about this. Nope, nope, no word on the Gator Village itself. These guys seem pretty focused on their meal their after-meal hygiene, and their after-hygiene rest, respectively. Well, I, I wasn't planning to just jump straight into a fight, but sure, I guess let's do that. We have a Gatorman Mush Muncher. He's gonna munch a mushroom, which will have unpredictable effects. A lot of health, but he's kinda cocked up his brain a little bit, it seems like, from all the shrooms. This guy's got beady little eyes. The Gatorman Meyer Chef, which Meyer Chef is that? I feel like I'm missing a joke there. Intends to heal its most wounded ally by throwing a nasty pastry at it. And then the Rage Jerk, that's the most amazing name. Speaking of Diablo, why do you play as the warrior or the rogue? You should play as the... the Rage jerk and the ranged asshole or something like that. They should all that's how you should just name classes in RPGs. He intends to viciously clobber Grammy for a shitload of damage, actually. This is the most actually worrisome that I feel like damage being dealt from characters has been. To the point that I think I can't rely as heavily on some of these other things. 
Ignite random opponents for a total of six on fire, but I, I don't know exactly who all that would apply to. Um, I'm probably best off just blasting some people with stench. I can still deal 33 damage, and presumably I'll get to do that again with my alternate boy. Um, so I'll do one damage there. Uh, you can be killed by the same means. And then if I weaken you as much as I'm kind of capable of when, like, a stench damage rolls through, then that should be dealt. Ah, uh, yeah. But it's still just shy, just shy by one. It's kind of ridiculous. Oh, but I should have the ability to do... Wait, do you only get to do one thing per turn? No, you, you get to do one skill plus. So, God, that's such an insanely powerful thing to have. Regular daily routines when you're... Oh, there we go. That'll teach those gator men to go about their regular daily routines when you're around. The gator stick, a vicious looking sharpened branch with smaller sharp sticks stuck to it and a crude leather hand grip. Nasty business. It would have been funny if they just took a branch and didn't attach anything to it. It was just a branchy twig where every point was sharpened. Same, same effect. Nasty pastry. You wouldn't feed this to a dog, though you would throw it at a dog if the dog was clearly a threat. Yeah, I would rather throw it to the dog. I don't want to be blasting him with a disc, I want to be playing with a disc. And a swamp mushroom. This mushroom does not appear in any mycology texts because mycologists famously refuse to get their shoes wet. <laughs> I actually did have to take someone out on field work once. And we had like one stop to make in a boggy area and I I forgot to warn them about it. And like I had my rubber boots, but really you needed like hip waders. It was pretty damn wet and they refused to get in it with me and I don't blame them. It was like five minutes of work, but it was five minutes of work where you got to walk out 50 meters <laughs> into a swamp. It sucks. It's not fun. <laughs> Biologists have to get their feet wet. Mycologists, who knew they were such wimps. You also collect a gator hide for that hunter, which is way less grisly than it sounds. The gator men are just carrying these around. The gator men hide. These are hides of a gate. Or a man. Also with my story about the bog thing, it makes it sound like he's just an employee who's stubborn and refused to work. He was doing me a favor. He worked the same job as me, but he had other things he had to do that day. So when I didn't warn him it was a swamp, and he said, oh no thanks, I don't want to get in that. I didn't blame him. <laughs> that was totally my bad. It did not prepare him. It's all like chained up and stuff. It's kind of cool actually. Oh god, Alphonse creeping up behind me there. He's he's very sleuthy. Has a very low profile when he's stalking through the swamp. Oh, there's like Okay, this is quite a large area, so I'm glad I put off coming here. Uh, do you have anything to say about the inside? No, that's uh, that's about it. Pile of rocks. The Gatormen put away their rocks when they're done playing. Which again, I assume if you're a geologist, you can interact with things like that. Because I find plants everywhere, just out in the open. They aren't hidden or anything, and I assume that they would just have fun bits of text to go with them if you weren't playing with the crypto botanist thing. That's odd. Nothing should grow in here. I, is, that, is that a cactus? Also, what up with the floaty head? Is this a ghost? While this is hardly the strangest thing you've seen over the last few days, it's definitely pretty weird. It looks like a ghostly man, most obviously his head, but you can just barely make out his body if you squint. You reach out to touch him, but your hand passes right through. He doesn't respond to any attempt to get his attention, but instead, he seems focused on something you can't see to the left of that disgusting fly-covered meat hook. After a few minutes, the novelty sort of wears off, so you get out on about your business. I can't make out his body at all. That ghost is just staring intently at something. Unlike most of the hanging sacks of gore in these places, this one is swarming with flies. Um, I don't know what that's all about, and I don't think I really want to deal with it. Seems freaky. Like magpies and shiny objects, gators are compelled to hoard all of grandfather's items. A grandfather magpie and- oh wait, these are things? Oh, like magpies and shiny objects. Magpies hoard shiny objects, gators hoard things from their grandfather. 
I was interpreting that the wrong way. Reading comprehension. But why? Why? What other? What, is there other things in this room that are grandfather based? Or like, why would that be a thing? I don't know. Grandfather's chair. Grandfather's disgusting bird bath. I guess it's a thing. Whether there's a joke there or not, I don't know. You're not sure that was such a great idea. Ugh. Grandfather's teeth for grandfather's mouth. Just sell them, I guess. I don't know why I would keep them, but I might just in case. These look like grandfather's bags. You found a bundle of meat stashed in one of the bags. Apparently the creatures have no need of money. You wonder how they can afford the rent on this place. I imagine things are kept quite cheap out in the swamp. Probably don't get your landlord dropping by for any uninvited, unannounced visits. So there'd be a, a little bit of comfort to be had there. I will push that aside, six muscle. The boulder looks heavier than when you last pushed it. If I, for some reason, wanted to push it back? It's a hell of a lot of hooks. Ooh, a radio. It's pretty easy to make this song creepy by placing it in a disturbing context, but they really outdid themselves here. You tune the radio to WGCR and hold Rufus's gadget up to it. The thing clicks a few times and the little needle on it goes up to two. You then restore the radio to the way you found it, making your mom proud. Uh, yep, yeah, we've already, we've already done it, nothing new. Wow! That is a lot of sleeping gators. This building is way larger than it looks from the outside, and it is absolutely full of sleeping gator men. The fact that the option is just to wake some up makes me think it's one of the recurring fights where you can just keep returning to it and fighting more and more and more. So a really easy way to get gator hides, I presume. So I'll, I'll do like one of these, then I'll go explore more, and then I'll come back if I'm short hides. The Gatorman Weed Lord. The way they've named the Gatorman is just amazing. He intends to whip Dark Rick the Mosquito with a vampiric vine. Weird that they have gained access to that technology is the best way I could describe that. I can do 12 damage and at that point like I, I just am better off dealing the 28 damage. Uh, you are coming up next so I'll, I'll stop you. I should be able to uh, take care of all of these Gatormen before another one has even had a turn. The way that that is able to be like layered together is just real convenient. You thinned the herd a bit. A group of gators is a herd, right? I wouldn't have actually questioned that. I'm not sure. They should probably be called like a scale or something like that, perhaps. Or it'd be funny if it was a crock of gators and then like a, an alley of crocodiles or something flip them around like that there's something to it <laughs> gator punch they drink it but that doesn't mean they like it we we have seen that and uh a gator men hide the only good gator men are fewer gator men i believe we're looking for five of the hides uh you it doesn't come up here the fences I have not dealt with at all. Well, I'll think of coming back to there. <laughs> I, it's I'm I'm ridiculously close to being able to just do that. Um, so like if one of these adds muscle, I guess rings don't really just add skills like that. This, I am curious if I'm gonna end up blocking myself out of there by doing this. Do I really not have anything that just adds muscle in my in my trinket accessory slot there? I'm a little bit surprised. Well, definitely I'll have pants for it. Because I just, I need to know what happens. Will it go up again? It was heavier and now it's heavier still. The force of each push exerts energy on the boulder, which is translated into mass equals MC. <laughs> Glad that's squared away. So, energy equals mass equals mc squared, which I kind of forget what c is. Is that just a constant in that equation? But, you know, equals mc squared. It's simple, but it's effective. I dig it. Very funny. But exactly what I kind of thought or worried might happen, where I've now blocked myself up from being able to, to actually deal with that. Uh, whoops. So let me instead just look for muscle-based items, and I, I'll chuck on uh, a hat. There we go, perfect. Push it away. 
Oh, it can keep going. The Rolling Stone gathers in mass. Okay, well, what what do I what have I eaten uh, food wise or? I've eaten no food currently, so I could I could really push this just for the fun of it. Uh, which adds the most muscle? Because if I can add more than one, that would be ideal. Dang, basically everything just adds one muscle. Well, I really thought that I would be able to find things that added more than that. Uh, what do I have, like, the most of? This is a potion. Oh, I don't really want to overwrite the potion, actually. Uh, I could just... I'll eat this? Sure. I'll eat the fish sandwich burrito style. <laughs> you eat it and can't help thinking that it would be a little bit better if it were a different kind of burrito instead. Burrited. Your body and mind are being equally nourished by the burrito you just ate. And I've kind of maxed out what I could do. So if I push this again, I won't have access to that. But I, I need to. Oh, it just got it just got worse again. Without without much reward without any reward <laughs> quite possibly I should ch I should check my effects one more time my potion all the attacks like that's pretty good even though I'm losing mysticality off of it um, the booze I could I could drink a booze that has uh, but I think you can only do that at the the speakeasy and I don't really want to go back to the speakeasy right now I could I could sacrifice that whole thing I, there, there, I could have eaten that as well because uh, I actually have two of those sure sure I'll I'll overwrite my chemical chaos I guess you rub the oil all over your skin especially on the parts of your skin that cover your muscles you, you're oiled up and ready to flex. Just ignore the fish smell. It's okay. I'll blend right into the swamp with that. Okay, it actually just keeps getting higher. So I, I've, I've created a scenario where now I'm probably never going to be able to move that thing again. And it probably wasn't worth putting the effort in to move it the few times that I did. But that's fine. We, we've tested it relatively thoroughly. Whoops, it's not too late to turn tail and run. Turn their tails into dust. But bam <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a weed lord again and the rot tooth. He's got quite the underbite and then scream mouth. Good god. <laughs> that's that's a little bit freaky actually. It just makes me think of the scare bear from Annihilation. Excellent movie. Highly recommend it. Uh, I kind of hope that you don't know what I'm talking about and that that encourages you to go watch that movie. That's that's my intended takeaway here. And I'll do my usual little wrap-up combo there. Man destroys Gator Man. It's a tale as old as time. <laughs> I don't know how many of... I, I swear, I think I needed five. I think I'm trying to build up to five of those. Okay, hi everyone. You having, uh, having a great little seance out here? A little bit of worship? Uh, this beast prefers books to strange obelisks. <laughs> He's having a great time over there. These beasts are too enthralled by the strange obelisk to notice you. Well, I, I think I'll just take them on then. I believe this is each of the different types. I guess there was the chef before. Uh, but it's basically every kind I had seen. I should be able to... Ah, uh, I could I could stop those three from having a turn, I think. If that works out as I want or need it to. I don't know if it would actually be worth it with this many Gatormen in the room to try and use specific skills to, to uh, attack as many of them as possible. You're not really going to do anything. Summon weeds, which will whip your entire party for eight damage. It's not that crazy, but I kind of don't want it to get back around to you since you're actually quite dangerously strong. Ooh. That, uh... Dang. Well, I guess I better do this then, because I didn't actually do the math and realize that that was going to happen. Uh, and I'll take care of that one. And then these two are less dangerous. Gator, Alphonse, Gator will chomp, Gatorman, Mash, Muncher for 6 damage and recover 3 HP. 
he will smack it with his tail, reducing stats by 5, and he will speak in forbidden tongues, dealing 6 damage to all enemies. Well, I guess, I guess that is the best one then? Oh, he speaks in that freaky language. Wow, that looked kind of insane. <laughs> <laughs> and with, like, the high-speed combat thing turned on. I never remember which one is which with, between the Parmesan and the, the Queso. They're, like, effectively the same. I, I lose track. Gaze long enough into an obelisk, and you will be beaten up by a stranger. Is the lesson for these Gatormen. It's a lot of meat. And all things we've seen. Did I get four hides just now? Yes, I did. Okay, well now, now I absolutely have what I need. And you all, I imagine this is going to be effectively the, the same fight. So like maybe maybe I could be more uh, careful. I guess I'll deal the sleaze damage to everyone. I know that that pays off. Uh, who is highest highest health right now? Okay, a few of you. Yeah, that's right. That, that first bit of damage was needed to get him below that 33. Uh, and now that that's dealt with, I'll I'll just go back to doing, oh, pretty well precisely what I did. Hmm. Mistake was made there, but that stench damage will be applied to everyone when that next turn starts. So, you should just die right now anyways. Perfection. Exactly what I wanted, needed. Uh, you know what? Sure. Uh, attack everyone. I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> A couple of you may die, but I'll get over it. Yeah, get just a quick little little snap, little bite. Hey, what do you know? My, my peeps might actually live. <laughs> I just was so used to everyone getting their world rocked last time around. Well, that was uh, effective. Do you want to talk about anything now that that's all been taken care of? Nah, he's enjoying himself, it seems. Huh, you think Alphonse can see a ghostly vision version of you just like you can see one of him, but you can't otherwise interact. He has a move that lets him speak in like shadow language. And he can, we can see each other in this world. I don't think that's actually common of any of the other allies. I feel like I never saw them when I was in these shadow worlds. Fascinating. What are you seeing, man? Well, I thought once I came in here, there would be something to interact with or to close or to follow up on. No, oh, surely there's something I can do here. Still fascinating. <laughs> That's really funny. I think the game may have recognized that I, I popped in and out like that. I'm going to do it one more time then if it changed once. No. Alphonse? Whoa. Oh, I didn't realize I could walk out while I was in the shadow world. Okay. First things first. What is going on out here? It takes a child to raise a village. Pretty funny. I... Fascinated is the best way to explain it, I think. This isn't even accessible in the regular... This is a whole different thing. Not even like our time travel is before. A long and naughty finger of eldritch energy. What did I just do? Something changed, right? Uh... Okay. That's peculiar. Now I, I no longer enter that other room even. Like, uh, I can, I can interact with that again. I better give, like, a little bit of a look around to see. Whoop. Still weird. Uh, you float right past all these gators. And surprisingly, there's, there's nothing on the other side of that. I thought there was, like, a real good chance that would have mattered. This is interesting. Uh, another one. A short and stubby finger of eldritch energy. Alphonse, you got ideas about what I should be doing with this? I, I, I imagine I need both of them to be pointing in specific ways. <laughs> the portal is now gone. <laughs> so if I keep going, I should open up an alternate 
alternate route. But now I can pop in and out from there. I'm like moving where the portal's accessible from and maybe otherwise just adjusting if it's open or not at all. Okay, I, I guess uh, quickly I will test. I wasn't able to go in here before and it has the hanging meat and I do want to check that. Okay, you're not alone in this place. Say something. <laughs> something, haha. <laughs> Wait, I don't sound like that. Uh, I can see everything. You can't expect me to understand that or wh what do you mean? In the patrol? No. <laughs> portal. <laughs> huh? Oh no. In the portal, I can see everything that ever was and ever will be. Everything that is to be known in our world. In this one and all the worlds in between. Oh. He says that in the portal. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, let me take a look at that. In I go, according to the floating man, all worldly knowledge is contained in this swirling, convulsing starfield, a kind of supra-terrestrial library. Your eyes bend in the writhing contour of the deep black and star-smeared tunnel, preparing nervously to receive the sum of all human and extraterrestrial knowledge. In the tunnel's bright center, you see a field and a cow suckling a puffin? A farmer is watching. Uh, I don't want that. <laughs> Okay, what, what else can I look at then? Uh, I don't think the portal contains the sum total of all worldly knowledge. I think it's just letting you look at a farm where a cow is nursing a puffin. And there's a farmer standing nearby and watching. That's all that's happening. He blinks. Backwards. <laughs> You're really enjoying this, huh? Can't leave. Can't leave? Why not? Uh, mid... Uh, mid... Midnight. Midnight man. Ooh. You can't leave because of the Midnight Man? Is that you? Is, are you the Midnight Man? No. Ooh, kind of freaky. Midnight Man. You don't want any part of that. Oh, okay. The, we've we've cut that off. Oh, wait. The, this, this is in here, too. The tree is here, but none of the other junk the Gator Men had gathered. It is empty. Interesting. What does any of it mean? <laughs> So will I have just closed the portal? It seems like every time I do that, it just closes the portal. So I think I will move it one more time. It should be the last new location for it. Um, oh god, I just created a little MP! There was, a, there was a portal there, but it went away. And, like, everything else is gone now, too. Yeah, you little freaky weirdo. What's your deal, man? Get back here. Do I need to, like, get rid of you somehow before I'm able to properly access this the stuff? He's just gonna run away again. Probably. Presumably. What if I do this? What do you think of that? He, he thinks nothing much of it, it would seem. Welly, welly, chi welly. Ooh. Uh, is, is he running around in, in the main world now at that point? Uh, there's kind of, there's still nothing over there. That has not changed. This has me very, very curious. And this will just move it the one last time. Back to inside, I guess. Okay, he okay, he went inside, so I need to lure him a very specific way into the obelisk. That little creature has given you the slip. No sign of it in this world. Oh shit, maybe that was maybe that was a mistake. <laughs> I might have just let that thing loose into the world. Well, that seems like the sort of thing I'll deal with another time. <laughs> you take a wrong turn, and instead of ending up where you wanted to be, you end up at the Monster Shack. You know it's the Monster Shack because of the big sign that says that it is. Keep on going where I was going. You, come talk. Oh, you're ready. You have your next leg level up. Alphonse starts sniffing the air and goes wild-eyed with anger. Well, wild-er-eyed. He back! What? Who back? I mean, who's? Abner, worst gator man, hated enemy. Wow, what'd he do? Not fight, go hide, coward. 
What did he do to you, though? The very act of summoning the world causes Alphonse to vibrate with rage. Stole sunglasses. Oh my god. Cool shades. Mine took kill. We're busy right now. Keep your scales on. I thought you were just leveling up. We will get back to that. Don't you worry. I've got your hides. John chuckles inappropriately. Need? Got news for ya. Don't need him. You keep him. That was just a test. Wanted to see if I could trust you with the real work. Seems I can. Ready for some real hunting? Even if it was a test, I think I should still get paid. Paid for a test? You're all mixed up, mate. This test is to get paid work. Change his attitude. In an aggressive show of physical strength, you pick up a rock from a swamp and bite into it. Listen to the true worm. I want some money. All right, I'm impressed. That's a ghost rock. Hottest there is. Donks. <laughs> Truth is, I got no need for five gator hides. My ambitions are far bigger. You, meet, you met Paul. You know he's mute. I'm working to build him a leather tongue. So what do you need for that? Ten gator hides. As it turns out, I've already got them. He, you hand over the hides you've collected. Beautiful. It's beautiful leather and I'll make a beautiful tongue. I can look at any animal and tell you what sort of tongue its hide will make. You don't believe me, do you? Name any animal. A whale. Is that a trick question? I've never heard of a whale. Uh, okay. That's the tongue sorted, but without something to animate it, it's just a lump of leather, leather flesh. What I need, mate, what my brother Paul really needs, is the power of speech. So, this next part is going to be much easier to explain if you've read The Little Mermaid. Uh, I'm not hunting a little mermaid for you. Don't need you to hunt a mermaid, mate. What you might not know is that the fairy tale about a little mermaid who gives up her voice is based on a real life story of a gator man. Merman who tr a gator man merman who traded his voice for a bucket of ham. That's what gave Hans Christian Gatorman the idea. Is it Hans Christian Andersen? Is that the original? Alphonse nods. Quiet Andrew. Famous guy. Ham delicious. Very smart. I tracked the voice down to a fishing hole in the gator village I told you about before. I must have it. Anything for my brother. Family is everything, mate. I better get going. So I think literally just the pond we were fishing in? That'll be easy to sort out, and I kind of have a reason to go back there anyways to figure out what was up with that little demon. I, I'm kind of panicking, like I'm, the timing of this worked out worse than I thought it would, so I'm signing off, but it's fine. I think that was a contained episode. It worked out quite well. Interesting stuff going on with the portals and the fact that the gator men can kind of span the shadow world, whatever that's, I, I'm just fascinated. Thank you all so much for watching. Pitch me on an episode title, and I hope to see you all again soon.